Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory Lord. be to God. Amen. We thank God for those of you that are out here in person, and we welcome those of you that are joining us online back again on Facebook. You pressured me so much I didn't have a choice. Glory be to God. And uh, we want to welcome those of you online in as we begin to go before the Lord and worship concerning our giving. We have been in the presence of the Lord prophetically in here this morning. Does everyone agree with that? Amen. You believe we've heard from the Lord here Amen. this morning? Absolutely. That it's not, you ain't heard from Al, you heard from the Lord, correct? Yeah. Glory be to God. And we want to worship the Lord concerning our giving, and we plan to hold him to his word. That's right. If his word is not credible, he is a fake, he is a sham, he is a liar. If it does not work, if his word won't do what he says he will do, it's not true. Mm -hmm. But thank God it is true. Yeah. It will work. Yes. And we're going to try it. We're going to put it to the test. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Now, I'm telling you, for anybody that is joining us here today that have sown, that has sown a seed, anybody online that sows in this offering today, I am praying specifically that God move for you in accordance with your faith. Amen. That means if there is no faith in your seed, then you won't receive this kind of return. This is not just about your money. This is about your faith. Okay? You need to be expecting to receive. You need to name something. That seed needs a name. If you want corn, you need to call it corn. Don't call it, don't call it corn and expect potatoes. Call it corn and, and expect a lot of corn. Do you hear me? Yes. I'm telling you, right. we've been playing church for too long. It's time out for playing church. We don't have time to play church. We've got to put some action to this thing. We're supposed to be manifesting. You guys are supposed to be blessed. You guys are supposed to be increasing. Yes. You're not supposed to be depending on the Babylonian system for a living. Mm. Your job should not be your only source of income. We've got to go higher. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's prepare to worship the Lord concerning our giving. If you're online, you can go to awfc.org slash give and find many different options to worship with us and sow your seed. Release your faith in it. We're going to release our faith by our words. Amen. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Do I have time to get some word out after this before you go to Golden Corral? Amen. Just a few minutes. Glory to God. Let's worship. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that you're our very own Father. We're your very own children. We've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. This place we live in, we prosper continually. The blessing is here, and it's on us, and we increase in true prosperity, spiritually, soulishly in our mind, will, and emotions, physically, socially, and financially. That is true prosperity. And we want what is coming to us in every single area. We don't want to leave anything out. Yeah. Now, Jesus, you're our high priest. We come before you. We ask that you take our seed. The money that we're giving, that we're sowing, we're doing it willingly. We've not been forced. We've not been put under pressure. We're doing it out of obedience, and we're glad to do it. And our heart is inside of the shell of this money. Our heart is in it. Yes. You said in your word, for where your treasure or your money is, there your heart will be also. Our heart is in our tithe and our offering. We ask that you take it to the Father and worship him on our behalf. Bless him. Praise him. Dance before him for our benefit. And as we give, we believe it shall be given unto us. Pressed down, shaken together, running over with good measure. We thank you that the wealth of the wicked is being transferred over 
to the hands of God's people, that's us, into our bank accounts, into our businesses, in our establishments, and in our ministries. We decree, Lord, right now that the devourer is rebuked for our sake. Lord, I pray specifically for this tithe, for this offering, and for these seeds that you would perform a miracle of recognition. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You said in your word that to try me with this giving, with the tithe, with the offering, with the seed, mm -hmm. to see if you won't open up the windows and pour out a blessing that we don't have room enough to receive. Yeah. Lord, I'm asking this to be a blessing of recognition in the name of Jesus that you show them in a way that they can see it and understand it that you honored the seed that they sowed this day in Jesus name if you receive it give the Lord a praise for it Hallelujah. praise the Lord Hallelujah. do you receive it do you believe it's real Hallelujah. come on give the Lord a shout of praise Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. You can have your seats. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We will take a three-minute intermission before we prepare to go into the Word. Three minutes, and uh, we will get, start, get started. Your time starts now. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, so um, I wish. Are you sure this is on actual Facebook? Yeah, Did you switch Facebook. it over? Yeah, so yeah I can on. pull up right now. Okay, so we're not on the YouTube. Church, turn it down. Turn it down two notches. And uh, brother, if you can help me put this down really quick.
All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, get ready to get into the Word uh, just for a few minutes here, for a little bit, and then we will move forward. Amen. We're going to go ahead and ask everyone that can and will to go ahead and come back in. Our service was a little unorthodox uh, today. Glory be to God. But thank God for not having to stick with protocol 24-7. I'll tell you what, when you have to stick with protocol 24-7, church is just, well, it's just flat out boring, glory be to God, is what it is. There's no room for the Spirit of God to move sometimes when we have our strict regimen that we have to stick with over and over the same thing all the time. So I thank God that we can uh, move around and uh, let the Lord interrupt our plans and move as he desires, okay? Somebody make sure in our children's room there that both of our teachers for today are not back there. Whatever teacher is not in there for today, have that teacher uh, come out if you wouldn't mind. And um, before we get into uh, the word here, uh, we're going to pray and we're going to jump right into this. Uh, you can keep your seats Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this word. And we thank you, Lord, that your word is truth, and that it has power in it, that it's alive, it's moving, and it's relevant to the natural situations and circumstances that we are facing. It's not removed from the issues we have. It's not removed from the very real bills and issues and problems and relationship uh, circumstances that we find ourselves facing, it's present, it's active, it's alive, and it's ready to be used. Lord, it's going to be used today because I pray that you give me something to say that will give the people something to confess. Because our victory is a byproduct, Father, of hearing, believing, and saying. I thank you that that's happening now. I pray that this word comes forward in excellence, accuracy, and boldness, that the eyes of the understanding of those who hear are enlightened. I thank you for that, Lord. I take it and I have it now. I receive utterance. Satan, your power is broken in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord Jesus. You may have to come down just a tiny bit on our on our volume there. Thank the Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, are you happy to be back out in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Well, go ahead and give the Lord a praise. Don't be embarrassed about it. Amen. No use you being embarrassed about it. Glory be to God. Have mercy. God is a good God, is he not? Amen. You know, I have a very limited time here today, and I, I need to move. I want to just say, by way of testimony, in my personal life. I always want you to know to a degree what this, what I loved about the word of faith is the preachers weren't just preaching about th these lofty things in the sky. They were always testifying about what's happening in their lives. That's what drew me to the word of faith. And I want you to know from time to time what's happening uh, in uh, my life. I'm telling you what, before I got saved, the holidays were a hard time for me before I came to the Lord because I didn't know how to actually have fun, clean fun. You know, in my mind for the longest time, I never dreamed that it was possible to have fun without some marijuana or some alcohol or, you know, um, women and, uh, you know, clubs and aggression. You know, I never, to me, I couldn't even imagine it. <clears throat> and uh, when I would get to, to uh, the holidays, I was always disappointed because the pieces never quite lined up the way I wanted them to line up so that I could have fun on that actual day. And I just realized that I was just so totally off base and I would just blame everybody. See, like you're messing up my holiday and all of this kind of stuff. And uh, I'm telling you what, after the Lord finally got my attention, I'm happy to report to you that I am having the most amazing holiday season experiences that I've ever had in my entire life. 
And it's just been that way and just been getting better and better and better. I am absolutely so, so, so grateful. All right. I'm grateful for, uh, and you know, we don't say this enough, but I'm so uh, uh, publicly, I try to, but I'm so grateful for my wife and my daughter. I mean, my wife uh, is just, I have, you know, I'm, I have enough sense to know that I absolutely don't deserve her, glory be to God, but I'm so glad <laughs> to have her. Thank the Lord. You know that, men, you know you don't deserve these women, but thank God for them. Have mercy. And uh, it has just been uh, a pleasure, and I love doing life uh, with the woman of God, uh, my wife. I thank God for what she does uh, as a wife in my family. I thank God for what she does uh, in this ministry. Uh, I uh, know I've seen many, many first ladies. I love the authenticity of the first lady that we have here. Uh, although we're, we're not big fans of that terminology, the whole first lady thing. I don't, I don't exactly even know where it comes from, but I guess we'll go with it. Amen. And, uh, <laughs> And um, what she does, we do everything together. We do business together. You know, we don't have two separate checking accounts. If you do, that's on you. But whatever I have belongs to her. Glory be to God. We are in this together. You understand that? There's no you and then me. There's us and there's we. Does that make sense? I'll get on you married folks about that a little later. Glory be to God. Have mercy. But uh, I trust her. I take this uh, sometimes, there's times in the past when we got in arguments and I said, we got a disagreement. I said, uh, guess what? If I'm going to take an L, you're going to take one right with me. <laughs> you'll take one right with me. If I'm going down, I'm sinking the whole ship. Glory be to God. Now, I'm telling you, that's the commitment in marriage. We have joined together as one flesh and we succeed together and we make corrections together. Amen. When we miss it, we learn together, and we get back up. We keep going. Does that make sense? I just figured that blessed somebody today because I heard the Lord mentioning that. Now, right before we get in this text, I have to watch it because our services are timed, and sometimes my precursor takes the recording of these videos a little longer than they would otherwise be where the teaching is actually concerned. But uh, last night at close to midnight, I was talking to the Lord, and you know, it's good to talk to the Lord. You should consider doing that on a regular basis. He actually does talk back, right? And I was talking to the Lord, and he pointed out some things to me, as he does from time to time, sometimes, and for me, and maybe a little different than you, uh, because we have different lives. You know, I have uh, different uh, circumstances than maybe than you have, okay? And uh, sometimes... Um, in most cases for me, the Lord is, he speaks to me a lot about the people that he wants me to pour into, the people he wants me to be a blessing to. So my life, the biggest portion, a big portion of my life, almost the biggest portion is consumed with the Lord, always ministering to me about how to be a blessing to you. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. I'm telling you, if you lived with me, you'd know that. Women that marry pastors, boy, sometimes they got it rough because they got to hear about what God is saying to the people all the time. I'm telling you what. And I don't say nothing out loud. They won't know it's you. They don't say anything. <laughs> and um, so the Lord was <clears throat> wanted me to point this out. And uh, not only to this church, but being live, I want to say this for anyone that may hear this. And this is not to be a scare. This is not meant to be scary. Okay, this is not a, a scary thing. I'll tell you what. I'm going to ask you guys to do me a quick favor. You know, uh, can I ask you to do me a quick favor? I want everybody, to, my brother. I want you to come and sit in one of these comfortable chairs right here. Go and sit in one of them comfortable chairs. Glory be to God. My two brothers back here. I want you to come right here on this second row right there. See, this will make it easier so when people try to figure out who I'm talking about, they won't be able to quite pin me down, see? So, you know, that's the number one accusation of the, pre of the preacher is, you know, I ain't talking about me over the pulpit. He telling my, no, no, no. I ain't even hardly talk to you during the week. Have mercy. 
I just like it, like, glory be to God, I like it. Now, let me say this. I don't know how long of a process this is going to be, but somehow I know inside of me that we are not far from a particular time to where we're not going to have this sort of easy access to church and the word of God. Now you know that scripture that says that when Christ returns, shall he find faith on the earth? Uh -huh. Better translation of that is when he returns, there won't be much faith in the earth. Now, how is that? There will be believers here because that's who he's returning to get. But out of all the believers here, not many of them will actually have faith. What is faith? Can anybody tell me what faith is? Faith is what? Assurance. Assurance. What else? Title deed. So when Christ returns, there won't be much assurance. There won't be many title deed confirmations concerning what God said in the earth. Are you, are you, do you see that? So what am I saying here? The enemy is in the process of trying to get the word of God out of society. Do you understand that? Yeah. I'm telling you that right now, if you lived in certain countries right now, you would not have the opportunity to freely come here and receive and access the word. And it's more countries now than practically ever before where this is happening, and it is happening over here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you now, the attitude concerning the Word of God needs to be in line with precious, uh, yes. precious, precious. Yeah. This is the way you need to be thinking about the Word. It is beyond precious. Being able to come to church is a huge, huge <coughs> privilege it should not be taken for granted. That's so true. There are people that are dying trying to get into a church congregation right now. The government is really trying hard to get the word of God out of society, out of the schools. They've already done that for the most part. Out of the schools out in where legislation is concerned and they're trying to get it out of the churches. You understand that? Now, if he's successful in getting the word out of the churches, then Satan gains an advantage. When Satan gains an advantage, what he does is he steals, he kills, and he destroys. Now listen to me, Word of Faith Church. Listen to me. I love you enough to tell you the truth. Now, back when the pandemic hit, God told us, and this is how, this is how judgment works in the kingdom. Understand me right here. I promise I'm going to preach good news to you, but you, you just need to hear this. They're like, oh God, no, no, you need to hear this. Judgment is typically unexpected. It comes when you're not thinking it's going to come. And typically when it shows up, it's kind of too late to change things at that point. But when judgment does show up at a portion of your life, what you need to do is run to the throne of grace so that you can get mercy as quickly as you can get it. Now watch this. When the pandemic happened in this church, I can't speak for any other church, the Lord told us, he said, Al, tell the people 
that in famine, Isaac sold, S-O-W-E-D. And when he sold, he reaped 100-fold harvest. Is that accurate? Yeah. Am I in the book? Yeah. Now, the Lord explained to me, literally almost like in a conversation it seemed, he said, Al, the pandemic relevant spiritually to what happened to Isaac is happening in your land. Well, what do you mean your land? The pandemic is a famine in the natural that is a byproduct of spiritual famine. Okay? And he said during this time, you need to tell the people to sow. Now, I'm like, okay, Lord, we're givers. You know AWOFC is some giving people. Lord, you know how we do. You know, we don't take it lightly. We give. And he said, no, they've got to sow. I said, well, what do you mean? He said, sowing means they've got to start preparing and building, administrating, organizing, and preparing for the harvest that is going to come, coming out of this pandemic. Now, let me tell you, religion won't allow you to, it won't allow us to preach and declare the word on this level because the people in the church live in a survival place. You're just trying to survive from week to week. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not this preaching it for that. This is not about you surviving from week to week. You are called to thrive. Do you hear me? Like Ayla says, she said, Daddy, can you hear me? You are called to thrive, not survive. Your testimony is not that I'm just trying to hold on. And don't get me wrong, I know you go through tests. I know you go through trials. I know hard things come, but your testimony cannot be I'm just trying to hold on and get through this thing. I don't care what's happening. If you do that, you stay there longer. You've got to respond. You have to fight back where the enemy is concerned. You can't stay there and just take an L. You can't let them just beat you up. You must fight back. Are you with me? Yeah. Now, when it happened in my house, I took, we took it seriously. In other words, we act like what Al Cooper preached was directly from God right. and that it was so real that in our house, we immediately started actions that corresponded to that instruction. Yeah. So where we were concerned, our company was completely shut down. Hundreds and hundreds of clients all over the country that if our doors stayed shut, we would have had people that have paid our company hundreds of thousands, even in the millions of dollars that would not be serviced if this pandemic kept our doors closed. In the natural, impossible to keep the doors open. Am I making that up? Some of you have been around me. Some of you were there during this time. Well, we practiced what we preached. We kept sowing. We kept declaring. We kept believing. We kept watching our confession. We kept keeping that word going through our eyes and our ears, refusing to believe what we saw, but being moved by what we believed. And sure enough, we didn't realize... I know, Chelsea, I'm not going to tell all the businesses. I'm working on it, okay? I'm working on it. It's like, don't tell too much. Well, we didn't realize during this time, we, had, we were actually building something that would eventually operate much bigger than what we ever even imagined. That we, would, we were putting ourselves in line to operate on a level beyond even what we assumed we would operate on even after we went back to regular business, okay? And everything we did during the famine, during the pandemic, 
when we look back now, those things were absolutely necessary to place us in the position we are currently in to do better than we've ever done in our entire lives. That's true. And we've already done great things. Listen, your pastor's not bragging on me. I'm bragging on the Lord. Yeah. The Lord has done great things in our lives. Amen. And you, there's no whole lot about it. Your, the Lord has tremendously blessed us. Do you understand Amen. that? If he's blessed me, you know what that means for you? Do you know what it means? They don't know what it means yet. They don't know what it means yet. You may be new to this. Here's the rule of thumb. When I get blessed, the door for you to get blessed is open. Do you understand that? No, you don't understand that yet. I'm talking above your head in spiritual jargon. Let me explain it to you. The anointing is the supply. And the anointing runs from the head down. That means whatever is working for your pastor will work in your life if you receive them. You got to agree with me. You're going to have to like me first. <laughs> you can't dislike me and then get this. You got to agree and like me. This anointing, you got to get on. Why he got to say it like that? Why did you got to get past all of that and say, Lord, I receive my pastor. Thank you for it. I receive that anointing that's flowing on him. It's flowing on me now. Glory be to God. That's right. There's some people in this church that have taken that attitude and they just can't get away from the blessing. Glory be to God. Just keep following them. <laughs> just lingering on them. Glory be to God. Now, The Lord, we had no idea. We had a very real decision to make about going back to, this was an opportunity to abandon business and run back to, the, to a nine to five. Now, I'm not coming down on nine to five, all right? You understand that? Before anybody get mad at me, I'm not coming down on the nine to five. Thank God. For the nine to fives. Right. Thank God. Thank the Lord for them. Okay, you with me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, the nine to five is a resource. But ladies and gentlemen, in what we are going to, it cannot be your source. It cannot be your only source. Do you understand? The nine to five, let me tell you, I know you won't hear this in school very often, but I'm telling you, is a byproduct of the Babylonian system. It is a system that was created way back in Babylon and inspired by Satan. It's where people attempted to meet their own needs without God and his word and his system. God's system for your supply, now that you've gotten born again, is the system of seed, time, there and harvest. There it is. It's right there. You have to sow to get out. You can't work your way out. I'm telling you, what's this in my pocket? I said McDonald's. You stay away from that McDonald's right there. <laughs> now, now, now watch this. This system, listen, ladies and gentlemen, this is so important. You can't work your way out of this system. God didn't design for you to work 50, 60 years of your life and then retire and live off of pennies and have a restricted life until you die and go to heaven. That's not God's plan for you. Now, do you deny that, that Social Security, that pension? No, no, no. You go to keep it. If you don't want it, go ahead and bring it. Sow it to the church. Go and sow it to the church. <laughs> Glory be to God. No, no, we're not coming down on that. 
What I'm saying is God has set it up to where that only has to be one of your resources. God has many more resources for you. But to do it, God's people have to be willing to come out of the lazy comfort zone. Now, the Babylonian system says this. The 9 to 5 is currently teaching this generation right now. I'm on it again. Yes, I am. This generation, millennials. Did I say millennials? Yeah, millennials. No. He's teaching this generation that, the, that whatever you get shouldn't have any resistance associated with it. Are you with me? That you need to look for the easiest possible way to come up or make a dollar. If there is resistance, run from it. This is what he's teaching this generation. All right? That get a nine to five, not everybody, and turn your brain off and allow yourself to be taken care of. Do not innovate. Do not create. Stay out of the way and accept the ration that is given to you. Are you with me? Does that, does that make you bad? Boy, it's like, if you throw something, I can duck, I'm telling you. I can duck, I'm telling you. I got, I'm still flexible. Now, God has a way for the believer that will use or live by faith that will allow you in the times that are coming on the earth and they are coming they are. to dominate. Yeah. You are, we are at a point to where you don't have a choice. You will have to choose one or the other there before you know. Jesus returns. You if you're alive, you will have to choose one or the other. You're going to have to choose God's system or you will be dominated by Satan's system. Are you with me? Now, my job as a pastor is to get as many people that the Lord will assign me to as are willing to dominate. So it's going to be uncomfortable because I'm going to push you not to settle. I'm going to push you to be great. I'm going to push you to be in positions to where you can be a blessing to way more people than just you and your family. Does that make sense? Now watch this. I got a few minutes left. I got a few minutes left. Now my timer's on. I can hear it. Now turn over with me really quick. Mark the 11th chapter. Mark the 11th chapter, verse 22. Actually, verse 20, Mark 11, verse 20. Let's start right there. Now, what are we doing? We're teaching. We're not preaching. It won't be boring if you pay attention. I'm telling you. You'll get revelation if you pay attention. Now, watch this. Verse 11 or verse 20, here's what it says. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree... This is the fig tree that Jesus cursed. How did Jesus curse this tree? With what? Words. With words, right? He used words. How do you curse the things that are not working in your life? With words. You're trying to fix them. You need to be speaking to them. See, you're toiling when you're trying to fix them and not speaking to them. You see? Yeah. When you are trying to do it and instead of speaking to them, you're in toil. The blessing of the Lord causes increase without toil. Okay. See, you can only reason with that person so much. They're not going to get it. You're going to have to speak life over that situation. Thank you, Lord, that my husband is a godly man. Thank you, Lord, that my wife is a virtuous woman. You see? Thank you, Lord, that the bill is paid in the name of Jesus. You see? You got to speak to things. Not try to, in your own understanding, work hard and fix them yourself. You see what I mean? Yes. Now, 
And they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. The moment you start speaking the word, the word of God is going to come out of your mouth. It's going to go beyond 186,000 miles per second into the realm of the spirit. And it's going to identify the spiritual cause or root to the problem you're facing. It it's going to go and attack it. It will not attack it until you release it. It will not happen automatically. You must release it. Now, when you first get born again, a lot of your release is happening as a result of the prayers and the agreement of God that's covering you. But after a while, you've got to learn how to do this yourself. Those of you that have been living by faith, this is us. You need to learn how then you need to learn that the problems don't just go away. You've got to face them. You've got to speak to them. Are you with me? Yes, now, it's going to work in the realm of the unseen. Yeah. And it's going to be working even while it looks like it's not working. Even while it feels like it's not working. Yeah. You're believing for a relationship with your kids. And right now, there is no natural proof that it is going to work. You're believing for the bill to be paid. The account just keeps dropping lower and lower. It just seemed like it was $100 in there last week, and now it's just it's only $60. What's, what's happening right here? You see that? You've got to speak to it. Now watch. Lord, I break, Satan, I break your attack. I break your attempt in this place. I decree that the people will hear in the name of Jesus. I decree that they are attentive, that the eyes of their understanding is open, yes. and their hearts are willing to receive. I break your power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. And Peter, calling to remember, saith unto him, Master, behold the fig tree, which thou cursed is withered away. And Jesus answered and saith unto them, watch this, here's where it changes, have faith in God. Now, in the Greek, the translation of this shows up in a couple of different ways. Some translations translate this, have the faith of God. One translation says, have the God kind of faith. But directly from the Greek, the word have right here in the Greek Translated means this, to take hold of, to possess, and join with another. Now, let's put this together. Jesus just did something supernatural to a physical tree with words that changed its natural recourse in the earth. Can we agree there? Yeah. With words and the disciples asked him, how did you do it? And he said, I did it by taking hold of and possessing and joining myself with God's faith. Now, I know you think you got this. Pay attention to this. God's faith. Not faith. Yeah. God's faith. Okay. Are you with me? Okay. I'll tell you, you get this, you can run all holiday. No, the whole holiday. You can have the presence under the tree all the way to the top, right? If you get this. <laughs> God's faith is different from just common natural faith. Yeah. To see that, turn over with me really quick to Genesis. Turn quick. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis, first chapter, really quick. I'm running out of time, glory be to God. Golden Corral is going to be calling you here any minute. Genesis chapter 1. She said, we ain't worried about no Golden Corral. We're trying to get this word, glory <laughs> be to God. Genesis chapter 1. Now watch. You got to connect the dots. Read scripture in light of other scripture to put this thing together. Watch what he says. Listen, in the beginning, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God did what? Wait a minute. You missed it. Wait a minute. Let's back up. Okay. We're talking about 
using God's faith. Joining with and possessing. I'm saying we're talking about a faith that I'm going to need to link up with to do the supernatural. Are you with me? Yeah. Jesus said, what I did was not of myself. I took hold of and possessed a faith that is more superior than mine. Are you with me? Yeah. Watch this. In the beginning, God did what? He created the heaven and the earth. Right? In the beginning, God created. Now, here's the question. When and where did you create it, God? When did you create? Where did you create the heaven or the spiritual realm and the material realm? When did you create it? Where were you at? How did you do this? Are you with me? Now watch. See, it's one word from God can change your whole situation. You could come in church and feel like church has no answer for your situation and be crazy enough to follow along what's being preached yeah. and the spirit of God. We've seen people come in that didn't have any hope and the spirit of God, because they were following along, yeah. healed their bodies right then and there. Save them That's right true. then and there. Mm -hmm. Go home and this impossible situation was possible That's by the true. time they walked out of the church. That's I'm true. telling you. Like now watch this. Verse 2. Keep scrolling. And the earth was without form and void. Now, we understand. You, I can't get into it right now, but we understand what happened right here, right? Yeah. Are, you still, are you still mad at me about telling you what really happened right here? Nope. Do you get it yet? Yeah. Have you gone and studied what I've been preaching to you about what happened right here? Yeah. Yeah. You understand that after God created the earth, the earth got messed up. You get that, right? right. It's time that you get it. You need to know it. After he created it, it got destroyed. Satan destroyed it. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. Keep going. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. What's happening right here? After the earth is being destroyed, God is now in the process of recreating it, reestablishing. But what he is about to reestablish... He had already created. Are you with me? Yes. Now watch this. Verse 3. Now, right there. Now watch this. And God said. Now God is a faith God. We're not told to use faith just because that's God's preference. God, when he created the world, he created it with a system that he bound himself to, law, legally, that said, I can't transfer, nothing can be transferred from the spirit realm to the natural realm oh. without the use of faith. Now, what again is faith? What is faith? Faith is assurance that comes from hearing the word of God. Now watch. God says in order for something to be transferred from the spirit realm into the natural realm, you need to hear about its existence yeah. and how it works in the realm of the spirit. And then you have to say it to transfer it into the natural. Are you, Lord, Holy Ghost, help me get this That's out good. right. That's good. So, God uses the same system. So before he could ever say it, he had to create it. Did you get, did you get it since you got it, didn't you? 
Did you get it? Let me say it on this side. This is where I got anointed right here. This is where it is. I'm saying that God used faith to establish the earth. He created its dimensions. He created its parameters. He created its magnificence and its vastness and its operations in the spirit inside of him first. It's like he went down in the seven and said, heaven, earth. Right? Yeah, I got it. Now, it was created there. And then in verse 3, we see here, then God gave life to it. He gave life to it by what? Speaking. Speaking it. I see it. You see? Yeah. So he's using faith. Now, what's Jesus saying over here in Mark 11? They said, Master, how did you do this supernatural thing to the tree and the earth? He said, I did what God did. I, you, I found out what was already created, what was provided for, creative power, and then I spoke it into manifestation. Let me say it a different way. You didn't get that part. I know it. I know it. Help me, Lord, say it right. He said that I found out. Let me just say this. Okay, Lord, you got to help me get this out. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on. Come on. How do I get this out? They got to get this. Now, notice here, and let me mention this really quick. Keep your place right there. In Mark, the 11th chapter, in verse 20, in verse 22, it says, And Jesus answering saith unto them. Now, that word saith in the Greek is is the number 3004, okay? Watch this for a second. I know this is tedious. I know this isn't making you shout, making you feel good. I'm not trying to make you feel good. not trying to make you shout. trying to teach you so you can do this on purpose. Are you getting me? In a little bit of time, I got left. Ten minutes. Jesus saith, that's 3004. Now, That word saith is the same word in verse 23. For verily I say unto you. Well, what does that word mean? That word means to that word is to give instruction by saying. Jesus saith unto them, Or Jesus gave them instruction by saying this. Have faith in God. Now look what he says to do. In verse 23. For verily I say unto you. Or I give instruction unto you verbally. That whosoever shall. Now this word is different. Say. Now in the Greek right here. This is 2036. When I say Greek. I'm talking about. What the Bible was originally written in. Right. This word right here is a little different. This word means to create by commanding and calling. Hmm. Okay. I got it. To create by commanding and calling. So Jesus gives instruction to these disciples about how to operate supernaturally and says, I'm saying to you that you need to use the God kind of faith to create by command and calling words. You need to use the kind of words that command and call forward. Now, 
the power of God that you have in you as a believer is creative. It's not designed just for your survival. It's designed so that you use it and set things that are not right in place and correct them in the earth. Do you understand? Can I preach on this level? You know, if you're just thinking about how you're not going, this may be difficult if you're thinking about how you're just not going to go rob somebody and smoke a drink tonight. You're trying to, you, you, This is bigger than that. You, you understand? I'm trying to get you beyond that. I'm saying that as a believer, you have been given a, the ability and the authority to use the power of God to correct things that are not right. There you go. That's the when Jesus came across this tree, that tree, he cursed it because it was not functioning the way it was supposed to function. We talked about that last week, right? That tree was a failed tree. It was a dud. So the creative power is in the believer that comes across the school district that is not functioning right. There you, go. you see that? You have creative words within your jurisdiction that can change problems in the earth. God has given that to you. But if you're so busy just trying to survive, if you're so busy just trying to be appeased, if your perception of church is that the preacher needs to make me feel good about my next few days, then you're missing the big picture right here. You're surviving when God needs you to be thriving, putting things in order. You're preparing to die when there's still much work for you to do. Amen. Do you see that? Yeah. Now, <clears throat> say that again, Lord, say that again. Now, as a believer, you are coming into a period in the earth to where if you don't step into this role, you are going to be dominated. In my case, I found out and convinced that I have antibodies in my body that <clears throat> are resistant to COVID, theoretically. Now, God gave me a company to create wealth and to help and be a blessing to others. And as I'm speaking my faith and declaring my faith and the word of God, I'm releasing that power and it just started to create things that were not there in the natural. It started to bring power from the spirit over into the natural, and it started to create things. Well, what does that mean? Had I not done that, right now, I would be a likely candidate to get a shot that could kill me just so that I could make a living. Do you get that? Now, I'm not coming down on anybody that takes a shot. Take the shot. Do whatever you want to do. It's between you and the Lord. Use your faith if you do take the shot. But do you understand that if I don't create, then I, I have no choice but to settle for whatever I have to take to survive. Mm, that makes sense. Do you get that? I have no choice. If they say take the shot or lose your job, don't feed your family because your provision is pro priority, which God never created the believer to bear the burden of his own provision. There you go. That's it. That's good. 
Why am I talking like this today? I might not even be in the right church. I may be supposed to be somewhere else saying this today. I might not even got the right people in here. My goodness. I'm saying that I've not been called to bear the weight of my own provision as a believer. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That's good. I've been called to create so that I am provided for and that I'm able to provide for others. No, you're still coming to church. You just want to come to a cute church, the cute program, <laughs> every week and be cute and feel better about yourself. That is not what we're doing here. That's not the purpose of the church, any church. The church is the dominant force in the earth. That's right, it is. We didn't come to take part, glory be to God. We came to take over. Yeah. Do you understand that? You've not been called to take part. You've been called to take over. You're not supposed to live under the dictates of what the enemy gives you. Here, man, take these crumbs and take this $30,000, $40,000, $50,000, 60000 a year and sit down somewhere. No. You're much more than that. Right. Do you know that the average human being gets at least $500 million ideas that goes through his brain on a daily basis? Wow. Those that are millionaires are the ones that actually acted on one of them. That's me. I'm one of them people. You're looking at a man like that. Do you understand? You're looking at a man like that. True. I've been talking like this for a long time, too. When I first started telling people that I would be a millionaire, they played me like I was crazy, 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 I'm telling you. Like, man, you're always in the sky. I'm like, listen. And after a while, I would tell people, I said, look at this paperwork. I went back and added up all my numbers for these few years with the kind of business I've been doing. If my name was at this side of the paper instead of this side of the paper, I would be worth a few million dollars right now. And I would say, you know what that means, don't you, bro? He'd be like, well, bro, I'm a millionaire. He'd be like, ah, oh, man, you're crazy, man, you're crazy. And these things start coming to pass. You should not be surprised that you have the ability to be a millionaire. That's right, that's right. Now, if you are offended by me talking about money, you will certainly not be in that category. <laughs> Ain't no use you even worried about it. You understand? Now, why is this, why am I not preaching what I studied? Okay? <laughs> Let's deal with that first. <laughs> no, my goodness. But why is this necessary? Because God has need of you. That's right. That's it. Do you understand? Yes. <sighs> Leave me alone, clock. Keep going. Can I get a few more minutes? Yes. Uh-oh, it's kind of light in here. I don't know. <laughs> yes. They well, got quiet on me. Yeah. You got it. I'm saying that God has need of the ability of the passion, yeah. of the dream, of the care, of the compassion mm -hmm. in you that's not operating possibly in anybody else within the jurisdiction you've been assigned to. Yeah. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. He needs you to step in and create something that people desperately need. See, prosperity is never just about you. As long as you conclude that it's just about you and your sufficiency, you will never be satisfied in God. As long as you are serving God with the mentality that it's all about just you and not understanding that it is about you and more. Did you get that balance? Is it about you? Absolutely. Now, religion will tell you it's not about you. Yeah. The great, great, so it's not about you. It's all about Jesus. No, that's a lie. It is about you. Thank it's you. all about you. Thank you. He died all for you. His plan requires you. But it's not just about you. He needs you 
so that he can help and be a blessing to other people. Are you okay with watching these people starve? No. Are you okay with that? With watching people starve while you go home and sit in a nice place and put your feet up? Are you okay with that? Are you okay with people out on the street dying, freezing while you're in your luxurious car and so forth? So are you okay with that? Are you okay with this give my name is Jimmy, I'll take all you give me? Are you okay with that week after week after week? Aren't you not, are you not tired of this regular good guy, good woman, good girl, good boy church routine? Are you not tired of that yet? You can join a club and get just as much satisfaction. You don't need the church for that. The church is where the supernatural takes Woo, place. That's it. That's it. You see that? Yes, that's right. The church is where you go exceedingly abundantly above and beyond anything that you ever dreamed or imagined. Yeah. You know the problem in the government? Can I say this? Are you ready for this? I don't get to shut me down when I get to talking real good. It's the church. It's us. You sit back and watch the news about all these terrible things going on, and you just criticize right there at Roku. Talk bad to Roku on the wall. <laughs> to the Roku smart TV. You just talk bad to the TV. Don't make no sense. These people ain't done. And you know you are not willing to do anything about it. You don't even care that you have a part to play. You will sit there for the next 10 years and watch it until they come and knock on your door and telling you that you're going to be locked up. Then what? These are the kind of days that we're going to be, that's going to be coming in the earth where you, you've got to prepare now. Do you understand? You've got to get in God's system of the blessing now. Yeah. You've got to get over into dominating and take your part in this glorious army right now. Yes. The benefits are amazing. Thanks. The benefits conclude, consist of overflow. Your needs will be met. Your needs will be met. You will be satisfied you will be sufficient in every single area of living. Yes. And you will be a blessing to many. It's, it's, let me just ask you, yeah. do I have anybody that's interested in that? Are you interested in that? Lord, if they're not, get them out of here. Replace them. Get me some people, Lord, that's interested in the blessing. Don't let me sit up in church for the next 10 years and preach to people that don't want your plan. That don't want what you want. Lord, I, you know I mean it. He knows I mean it too. He knows I say that privately. Lord, replace them. And you have to understand the way the kingdom works is if you don't get with the program, God will look for people that will. But he prefers you. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. He called you because he preferred. Listen. You okay, Lord, I won't say that. I won't say that. And I am completely out of time. Have mercy. Let me close by saying this. And Brother Church, I still haven't gotten over Mark 11, 23. <laughs> Been trying to get past this for like... At least two months, <laughs> two months maybe. Let me say this. The faith of God is the power of God that allows you and I to tap into the provision and the realities of the spirit realm so that you can use it and wield it like a sword over here in the natural. You can have, I mean, listen, you know, when I was growing up in the streets, we adapted this, this mentality. I mean, and, you know, you have people that 
Let me just say this, glory be to God. I'm talking to people online right here. I'm talking to people online. I'm just, you know, <clears throat> and some of you have heard me say this before, at the risk of potentially being offensive, I'm going to say it anyway. So, you know, where I grew up, you had different, you had, you know, neighborhoods, bad neighborhoods, right? And you always had two kind of people where these neighborhoods were concerned. You had the people that were from outside of the neighborhood that came into the neighborhood and then you had the people that went to sleep in the neighborhood right mm -hmm. that were from these neighborhoods you know we would distinguish them and say you're from the projects or you're not from the project you're from the hood or you're not from the hood now later on we found out we were programmed <laughs> okay yeah. that we were programmed by preachers you know who the preachers are Rapper. The rappers are the preachers. They are ordained men and women of God, Satan, God. All right? So we used them to program us. We saw them coming in, grabbing these people that had a voice that were talented, signing them to a contract saying that we'll take you out of this poverty, out of this mess, mess if you will agree to allow us to program your society and your community which ultimately will kill them and they will self-destruct uh, but hey at least you'll be taken care of and we've seen many 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 people agree to it and do it so we were listening to music that taught us how to kill ourselves I started selling drugs when I was about 12 13 about 13 years old and uh, we learned what the weight was on the drugs, how, what prices to sell them at from the music. We learned what to say and how to communicate with each other within the streets, within the hoods from the music. The rappers taught us the lingo. You see what I mean? They taught us the lingo. They taught us, they taught us how to dress. They taught us what to say psychologically to a woman that is already predisposed by effect of this culture to get them to do what we wanted them to do and so forth and so on, right? They taught us how to, how to just basically stay at odds with each other and just self-destruct. But it looked so cool. Yeah. See that? It looked so cool. Now, I was the kind of person where I couldn't even listen to regular rap music. And I couldn't listen to it unless it was just the most destructive, hardcore, what they call trap music. My wife would get in my car, she'd be like, oh my God, I'm scared. <laughs> what is this? Why are you listening? What is this? Just make you nervous just hearing it. And I just... I fed on that just like I feed on the word now. And I meditated on it so much that I became proficient where the streets was concerned. I was legitimately authenticated, swagged out in the streets. I got my, my stripes out there. You, you see what I mean? You know, I'm the, I was the kind of guy when I go to prison, like, I'm not going to be the guy I picked on. You know, I'm going to go in and I'm going to try to take over wherever I'm at, this kind of thing. And I had an immense sense of pride built up in this kind of thinking, not realizing that Satan had made a fool out of me psychologically. Didn't realize that the men that I saw on the corners in the neighborhoods when I was a kid that were 40 and 50 years old, 40 and 50 year old gangsters. Some, even back then I knew it didn't, something didn't look right about that. Like, like bro, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? Why you, you know, now when you were 20, your pants being down, we could understand, but now it's just plain weird. You, you know, what are you doing? And I started to see this pattern over and over and over and over. And you know what I realized? 
that Satan is doing the same. He's copying God. You see? He's telling them, he's giving them the word. The word of the curse. That if you meditate in this curse day and night, what will happen? All these all these things shall I give unto you, and every last one of them will kill you. You see? But I'm telling you what, when you come over here and meditate on some of this life, well, I'm telling you what, on some of this good news, on some of this power, I'm telling you, there has not been an event or a fantasy in my life that I ever dreamed about uh, engaging in, completing, that I've not been able to enjoy. I've done it all, big, all over the country. And none of it compares to, what, to how I am living and what I'm experiencing in the kingdom. I mean, none of it compares. You know, I was in a, the gang I was in, and I'm testifying, my wife just was just uh, shared the gospel with a guy that was dying a couple weeks ago that had just got shot down, down on our street. He was dying, and my wife's down on the ground preaching the gospel in his ear while he's dying. And uh, we and we appeal to those people and, and believe that God's going to bring whoever did it to justice. But, you know, for the longest time, I was in a gang. I was a Crip member, a 60 Crip. And the color red, I went practically my entire life and never, ever purchased or owned one red anything. Not in my house, not in my car, not in my apartments, not even on my kids. Like, you better not buy anything red for my kids. Do you see that? Yeah. Do you understand how twisted that is? Yeah. Do you understand that is absolutely demonic? That is not natural to think that way. Yeah. And you know, every time I went to prison, you know who was there? The same people. No, none of the gang members were there. When they were, they didn't have any money. Glory would be the guy would put much money on their books. It was always me, lonely, by myself. They used to say the devil will take you further than you meant to go and keep you longer than you meant to stay. Amen. The blessing. Ladies and gentlemen, is the place to be. Everything you're looking for, paper chase, there used to be this group called Hot Boys. Anybody remember hearing about them? Remember that group? And they had this song called Paper Chasing. And they built in this theology to that still out here in the streets right now that said this, get money, chase the money, get to the money. I had that mentality made my wife sick to her stomach almost. That I would go around and tell people like, man, if you ain't getting no money, you can't even be around me. I get money. I get money. If you're holding all your money in your pocket, you don't have any. You see? You got money. Why is it in a bank account? <laughs> you keep all that $2,000 in one pocket, what are you doing? You, you know? You understand what's going on right here? As long as you are chasing money, you will always be a slave to it. You get over here in this blessing, and now I'm not chasing my money. My money is chasing me, glory right. be to God. Yeah, like that. Like that. I could get a five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollar car at any time in my sleep, glory be to God. Happened so many times that I ain't even shocked by it no more. Like, oh yeah, look, I'm giving it away at times. Like here, somebody else go ahead and take it. I don't even you're just gonna do That's it. That's true. You see that? Yeah. That is the blessing of God. It maketh rich. It does. It does. The God kind of faith. Join with it and live supernaturally. You receive that? Yeah. You get anything out of that? Come on, give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, let's stand. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for that word. Glory to God. Well, Lord. I have no idea what I just preached in here today, but I thank you for it because I know it was the good news and I believe that everything I asked for it to do was done. Thank you. 
I'm having just a great time. I'm telling you what, did we have a good time this weekend, church? We had a good time. Yeah. You know, I didn't have any, I lost all my family, man. You know, I, I lost everything. I lost a wife, a good godly woman. I lost relationship with my two children. You know, I lost business. I lost a community of healthy people, family members. Just lost everybody's trust. Just broke it over and over. I lost my dad. My dad died because he didn't have anyone to speak life into him so that he could get his healing. My brother killed. I mean, just, oh, I could just name so many people that have just died. There's probably some people right now from the past with me and you know we could just name over and over and over how many people just died, died, died. Just so when you get numb to it. Lost all of that because I didn't understand that everything I ever wanted, everything I was looking for is over in the kingdom of God. Everything is right there in that kingdom. Don't compromise for it. Glory be to God. You hear me? Do it right. What you compromise to keep, you'll lose. Don't compromise. God has a superior way. Sent back this weekend, bought me a real tree, glory be to God. Didn't even get me a fake one. Got me a real one, glory be to God. Put the water in it myself. <laughs> you see that? Teamwork. Me and the wife got down teamwork. No, nah, baby, you screw that side. I screw this side. No, nah, you can't go too fast. We got to do it at the same time. So it'll work right now. I mean, my wife set, my wife and I set up and talked for like, I mean, we may be talked for like, she says two hours. You know, preachers call it four hours. I say about four hours, what I tell you. And when I look back, every major thing we've ever created in our lives happened that way between me and my wife. Yeah. Every time we sat down and connected that way as husband and wife, that's how this ministry started, that's how our company started, that's how our family started and grew. Every major thing we've ever done, we sat down and we dreamed, we used the faith of God. And it made the impossible possible. And if he'll do it for me, he will absolutely do it for you. Do you believe that? Absolutely. Come on, give the Lord a praise for that. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I want every head bowed and every eye closed right now. Now, I want to pray for anybody that is either not born again or has broken fellowship with the Lord. Now, I'm telling you what, I don't have any magical powers. This one is not on me. This is on you. When I pray this prayer, the doors for you to get back in right fellowship with God will open. If you're online, I don't care where you are. It will open right back up right now. But you have to walk through it. As an act of your will, if you'll choose to walk through it, then at the end of this prayer, you will be back in fellowship with the Lord and have access to every bit of the blessing, yeah. the power to prosper and succeed in every area of life. Yeah. I don't care if you lost your apartment, you'll get a better one. That's right. If you lost your car, you'll get a better car. Right. If you lost a spouse, you'll get a better spouse. Right. <clears throat> if your kids are gone, you'll get them back. If they won't come back, he'll give you some more. You have to make the decision. So I want to pray for those that are either not born again or have turned away from the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for these individuals, whoever they are, wherever they may be, wherever this is heard. And I pray, Lord, that your goodness leads people to repentance. I pray that you do good to them right now. That you let them know in their heart that you're not mad at them. That you're not turned off concerning them. That you're not disappointed. Yeah. That you love them now even more than they ever realized you loved them before. 
And I thank you, Lord, that your desire is to do good to them, to give them a good life, to help them out of whatever mess they've gotten themselves in. You have the ability to supernaturally turn it around. And that you're waiting for them. All they have to do is repent and acknowledge and say, Lord, I've missed it. Lord, I turned away. Lord, I've not accepted you as my Lord and Savior. Whatever category they're in, I pray right now that as they repent, that you forgive them. And in their heart and out of their mouths, as they say, Lord, forgive me. Come into my life. Make something out of my life. Make me a better person than I've ever been. Forgive me. I acknowledge you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. Today is the first day of the rest of the life of success that you died for me to have. This Christmas will be special because I will spend it as your very own committed, connected child. Amen. Lord, I thank you for that. I believe, Lord, for everyone that's prayed it, that it has happened to them right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, they don't have to figure out how to clean it up. All they have to do is listen to you because you speak. You speak at church. You speak through the word. You speak through the Bible. You speak in the inner witness. You'll show them what to do. Now, in this house, Lord, I come against depression. Depression is connected to sorrow and grief. I come against melancholy. We won't, turn, we won't tolerate it. I come against any, any uh, um, stagnation in your life. I break stagnation off of you in the name Thank of Jesus. Lord. I decree that you're full of boiling energy and enthusiasm. You are not a procrastinator. Amen. You get things done. You are progressive. You move. You accomplish. Amen. In the name of Jesus. You are not sluggish about anything, but you're full of boiling energy and enthusiasm in the pursuit of all of your goals and your dreams. I decree that dreams are being resurrected in you right now. I decree that supernatural energy for living is coming to you right now. Dreams are being restored. Greatness is being realized in you now. As awesome as you are, you're going to be even better now. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for these things. We take them and we have it now. Jesus' name. If you receive that, give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's just worship for a second. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord, Thank you, Lord, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Koro ma ise kedia todo sakrate le se konota me korota la sakrate. I hear the Lord saying for somebody right now, whoever this is, I hear the Lord saying, He says that I love you, and I will work out this situation in a way that's better than you could work it out. But you have to stop. And take your hands off of it. You've got to take your hands off of it. You've got to quit trying to fix it. Quit trying to put it together. And you've got to roll the care of that over on me. If you have to step away from the situation, then that's what you need to do. You are no one's keeper. It is not your responsibility to keep and ensure the success of another person. You believe God. God says, I will do the work. I'm good at it. I've been doing it a long time. I'm better at it than you are. Mm -hmm. Cast the care over on me. Refuse to worry another night. Amen. Refuse to lay down and worry another night about how this person is going to turn out. Refuse. It is not your fault. And they have a choice. They have a choice. You can't force them. Doesn't mean that you've done anything wrong. You believe me and I will go to work in the situation. If you keep your hands on it, I cannot work 
Thus saith the Lord. If you keep trying to manipulate it, and that manipulation is out of fear. You can't be afraid of losing. Can't be afraid of losing. Can't be afraid of losing resources, losing money, losing people. You cannot be afraid to lose. The Lord has got your back. If you'll let him go, you'll experience freedom that you never thought it was possible. Don't hold on to something insufficient when what's in front of you is much greater. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thus saith the Lord concerning sorrow, concerning sadness, concerning emotions that go up and down, I have given you the ability and responsibility to control that. Thus saith the Lord, I cannot do it for you. You must do it. How do you do it? Speak to it. When you feel it, talk back to it. Say no. Power will come out when you say no. I refuse to be depressed. I refuse to be upset. I refuse to be angry. I refuse to be sad. I refuse to be hopeless because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Just like that, it will work for you. Glory be to God. Now, one last thing I want to say before we close out. If you are not going after your purpose and your assignment, you cannot keep depression off of you. Let me say that again. If you are neglecting your purpose and assignment, you're going to have a hard time trying to keep depression off of you. Fulfillment in this life is connected to your purpose and your assignment. Wherever it is, you've got to be going after it. You cannot just sit. You can't just sit. You can't just work and go home and go to sleep and go back to where you can't just do that. You've got to tap in to God's bigger plan for your life. You are not here to live to work. You have not been put here to do nothing but work Amen. until you die. That's not what you've been put here for. God has a much, much, much bigger plan for you. I pray that the Lord, Lord, reveal it to them. Open up the eyes of their understanding. Show them how to navigate. Lord, you know, they've been doing it so long, it's difficult. How do they turn from it? How do they get, find their way out of that? I believe, Lord, and I receive you showing it to them right now. I decree supernatural strategies and ideas and concepts that will break you out of that mold in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Do you receive it? Amen. Do you still love me after a message like that? Well, come on, give the Lord a praise. Glory be to God. If you're mad, then go on and forgive me right now. Just go on and forgive me right now. Then keep it moving. Glory be to God. Don't even come tell me about it. I'll just play it. Amen. We love you. God bless you. And uh, thank you for coming out. And we will see you next time. Remember, what's in front of you is what? Greater, Greater than, than anything that you've ever seen, anything that's behind you. Amen? Amen. 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 Consider yourselves dismissed.